Greetings and welcome to Mount Olympus. I am Hercules Invictus and today I am proud to bring you Brian's Drive-In Theater with Brian Walker. Greetings and welcome, Brian. How are you? I'm well tonight, Hercules. How are you doing? I'm doing great. Today's adventure was going into a smoke-filled house and opening up the uh, windows. Uh, well, um, you can't just leave it at that. Um, was it on fire or? My, my mom forgot to turn off the burner. So oh, the, the oh, 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 I was see. Burning. So fortunately, my son smelled smoke <laughs> and I went inside and it was all sorts of uh, smoky uh, and... Uh, so that's what I did today. Well, you know, not too long after we bought the house that we've lived in forever, uh, you know, this round anyway, um, the house next to ours in our development burned down because oh. they left a uh, some sort of pot on the stove and they decided to go out to eat, uh, not thinking that there was something on the stove. I guess they just forgot, you know, and the house burned down. Well, fortunately, that was not the case here. <laughs> Managed to turn it off. It took a while to get all the smoke out of the house with fans we brought over and things like that. But all is ah. now well. No, oh, very good. I'm glad that nothing you know, uh, bad happened there. Me too. And I'm really excited about uh, tonight's uh, show. This is the second one that flies under uh, the banner of Brian's Striving Theater exclusively. Oh, uh, great. <laughs> and tonight, I thought we would talk about you know, the holes in many faces of Hercules. Um, what do I need to do that I haven't done? And there are so many people that I would love to profile uh, that, that I have yet to, to profile. Um, the many faces of Hercules is by no means complete. Uh, and I, I'm sure some uh, completists would bristle over the fact that I don't have a Roger Brown page, and you know he's a you, it, it, it's still with us, you know, fortunately, uh -huh. and is, is a major peplum figure. But it's not just Roger Brown. I mean, there's a, actually a host of uh, other people, you know, uh, other actors uh, for whom I haven't built pages. Uh, so many of um, you know the, the actors that you see in supporting roles were in you know these movies countless times supporting a variety right. of different actors and i would like to you know, expand and evolve um the many faces of hercules to be uh more complete uh to be more completist i guess i should say uh and you know honor those you know uh people um you know, who we're in a variety of, of these films. Uh, Mimo Palmara, who uh, is an Italian actor who was in, uh, I wanna say probably a dozen or more uh, Peplum films. He was often the uh, protagonist sidekick or sometimes he was the antagonist because you know, he had a, he, you know, he was a you know, nice looking man, uh, you know, certainly handsome enough to be a, uh, you know, a a leading man uh in, in good enough shape to um you know be an ad adversary to uh one of the uh you know peplum actors uh and uh, and he's somebody for whom i've collected a lot of uh, images and such uh over the years and um although i haven't i haven't done a new page now for about five years i am uh, looking forward to getting back to that and start making additions uh, again to the website. Will other parts of your website follow or are you strictly focused? Oh, there's, there, there is no section of my website that's anywhere near being complete. <laughs> Books, Brian, uh, they're, they're excellent web pages. They have excellent uh, pictures, which uh, you've chosen and which you've uh, fixed. Uh, great coffee table books, a whole series of them. Brian's Driving Theater, the well, there you go. No, it, it, break it down by genre. genre. We can break, break it down by genre. How about yeah, that? yeah, definitely. You have a whole, whole series of them. And you could talk to Nicholas uh, Dyack and Michelle Brittany. That's what they do. They, uh, you mm -hmm. know, they produce and help other people produce these uh, books. Well, you know, uh, we, we've talked about this in depth before, but but I am uh, retiring from my day job uh, on June 30th. Uh, for, I've 
worked at a, a large uh, mid-Atlantic state university now for a long, long time. And I'm being paroled, I'm retiring. Uh, so I will have more time, hopefully, uh, to devote to uh, causes such as this. I, I certainly hope so, because, uh, again, your website is a shrine and it's a place of joy for all those who love certain oh, types thanks. of movies. And you're, you're putting it together as a labor of love and uh, uh, you're always uh, playing with it and expanding it and polishing it up. And uh, so even though in character it's remained the same in in practice, it's evolved greatly since the first time I stumbled across that over two decades ago. Well, and, it, and to tell you the truth, it needs to evolve again. Um, uh, over uh, During uh, 2022, uh, last year, I uh, tried to drag you know, <laughs> the website uh, look um, the forward a few years, and it was successful here and there. Uh, I, I really dislike the index page or the opening page. I just, it wasn't what I wanted at all, but I had to pull some, I had given myself a deadline. I had to pull it together by, I think it was February 1st and that's where it was <laughs> when the day hit. So I just you know, flipped the switch and there it is. Uh, I wanna continue refining uh, the, the look of the website uh, as well. I let it go for about a dozen years or so with the same look, and that, that's a huge mistake, you know, not, not to refine something. But, you know, your career gets in the way. I mean, it, it, it sort of takes over your life after a while. Um, what I have found, and I, I've heard this from other people who are older like me, is that at work, even though um, they may be looked down upon because they're over 50 years old, they, they're doing the lion's share of the work. And they're the ones with all the institutional knowledge, right? Uh, as well, so people are you know coming to me like crazy right now. The people who are inheriting my uh, job duties uh, after I leave, and they're freaking out. I'm like, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I made it look easy, but here you go. So. <laughs> Well, one of the things I, I found uh, is is uh, I started retiring out of the human services a bit was that mm -hmm. uh, uh, people wanted to like take my stuff, you know, take over things that I myself had started and initiated mm -hmm. and they had all the material. So, you know, technically they could have started it, but they didn't understand how my brain works. My brain doesn't work like normal brains, you know. Uh, my brain works uh, quite uh, differently. So I had my own logic for putting things the way I, I put them. And unless you knew what my logic was, uh, it wouldn't make sense, even though to me it would make sense. So well, several... well, tell me about your logic. Is it more circular, more linear? No, it's not very linear. Um, okay. It, it's, it's like it spirals more than is circular. circular. Okay. It seems to go around and around, but it really doesn't. It like moves in a different uh, directions. Well, but it, it can it can be both. Yeah, yeah. 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 But 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 there's a circular movement to it, I'm guessing. Right. And and people like uh, like I, I run very successful student internship programs and uh, people thought that somewhere somewhere in my paperwork there was the answer. And one person even, I didn't find out till years later, unfortunately, uh, took something I developed as a evaluation tool and published it under their name. Mm -hmm. but, uh, so many years have passed that I couldn't really do very much uh, about it. Um, but anyway, um, so a lot of things worked because I'd worked with people for decades. So I'd work with people who were in schools and uh, I put together internship programs and they moved around and kept in touch. And if they were somewhere in the area that I was doing my thing in, uh, I would do stuff with them. So one of the things the agencies didn't realize is yes, they could have the names of everybody, but if they screwed up everybody's friend, what type of cooperation were they you know, going to get? You know, things work because it was, we were friends, you know, and we we're doing this cool thing that kept shifting because we were all in different uh, jobs, but we we're still doing these, uh, you know, these internship programs. Um, and uh, again, the, the friendship was the key element in making it work, you know, plus the expertise of knowing uh, what could benefit a certain particular set of students in a particular type of institution and, and so forth. And that's not something you got out of my notes or, you know, 
or things mm -hmm. like that. So it, it was it was very interesting. And a lot of things I've done over the years were discontinued, you know, and are no longer running, which is sad, but what can you do? Well, and that's what's going to happen to a lot of the stuff that I do. Um, and I was in, 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 in pondering it. I was initially sad about it at first, but then I thought, well, you know, things, things have to evolve. They have to change. Um, but dynamics change. Uh, and, you know, what I do uh, might be bettered by somebody else who comes along and has a different approach to it. Uh, you know, working in higher ed for uh, a long time, there are such generational shifts uh, and they seem to come pretty quickly anymore. <laughs> uh, you, you just get used to, you know, a certain kind of cultural designation for a, a certain demographic and then it all changes. Right. <laughs> And maybe we shouldn't try to be a pigeonhole people like that as it is, uh, but we do. Um, and higher ed is notorious uh, for that. Um, but you, know, whatever happens to uh, my position happens. Uh, I, I wish my, my coworkers well because it's a great group of people. Uh, it's just time for me to move on. And move on, you will, and you'll get to do all the things you wanted to uh, do, and now you'll have the time to do them. Uh, well, I'm not so sure about that because I'm going back to work in August. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, I, I, I don't want to work full time, you know, anymore. But but part time, you know, I I don't want to be, I I I don't want to be, you know, uh, I don't want to say a typical retiree because there isn't one. Um, but I don't want to be the stereotypical, I guess, retiree, that might be a better way to put it, who, uh, you know, goes out and plays golf once a week, watches game shows, you know, what have you. Um, I, I, you know, I want to stay involved in a university setting. I love teaching. Uh, and that's what I get to do in the fall. Uh, so I, I'm very excited to continue my association with higher education. Just not on a full time basis. So a new adventure starts, a new modification, a new evolution, and that that's good. It is, and um, I would. There are, you know, I mean, this is this is in the short term, but in the long term, yeah, you know, I'm I'm not you know too you know, old yet. I mean, I might have a third act in me. Who knows? <laughs> I'm sure. I'm sure you do. I'm. I'm older than you, and I'm finding like a whole new. I, I just meant from whole from a standpoint of uh, you know, uh, employment or you know uh, being self-employed. Actually, uh, I think appeals to me a lot. Now, what I would do within that, I'm not sure. I have a couple of ideas. Greek. I, I'm doing Greek mythology now to a great that I enjoy because that's something I, I like and that's what I want. Mm -hmm. You know, I also do other STEM things for other companies and, you know, it, it's it's very fluid and I'm grateful for that type of work, but it's not as exciting as the work that I've chosen to do and that I'm doing. So um, I have like a Greek mythology thing going on and now I get offers, you know, I still look for work the typical way, but mostly it's word of mouth and I'm only one person and then Athena drives me and, uh, you know, stuff like that. Um, and uh, I'm having a great time doing that. And in truth, I'm making like four times more doing my thing than doing what I would do for somebody else during that time. But if I don't get bookings, then I'll, I'll take bookings, you know, from any place just to, you know, to fill in the hours I've devoted each day to making money. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Um, but it's nice, you know, for you to be able to say, well, you, uh, I, I want to do this today, so I'll do that, as, a, mm -hmm. as opposed to knowing that you have to do it because, <laughs> you know, otherwise, yeah. <laughs> otherwise you get sent home and don't get any more paychecks. Um, and I have an adventure to, to propose. It's in its first uh, steps. Uh, uh, I'm, I have a cable show. It's going to run 12 episodes. The first se I do things in seasons and I always set the episodes. So that's going to have an arc. And I'm going to be asking you to uh, do what you do so well. And we're going to talk about uh, s s outer space peplum movies as we have in the past, especially. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm.
Hercules is against the moon men or versus the moon men and contra the moon men. Um, but it, it's going to wrap up and then it's going to spark another uh, arc that's going to be slightly different than what I'm focusing on, but it's, it's going to feed into what I did before. And that's uh, the, the introduction to it. But I don't know if it'll be on Manhattan Neighborhood Network or OPTV. Uh, but I, I want to do the thing with uh, the Peplum movies that we've discussed uh, so often. And uh, that I'd love to have you on board. Uh, and that will be with costumes and subplots and all sorts of stuff going on. So we're going to have a lot of fun with that one. It sounds great. I'm looking forward to it. Awesome. And hopefully, hopefully by then I can uh, you know, beef up uh, the Many Faces of Hercules site. Um, I would like to do uh, pages for so many of um, the uh, actresses uh, in Peplum films because you you saw a lot of the same. I want to say like ten actresses cycle through uh, a lot of those roles, um, and uh, they, they were all you know um, actresses who, for the most part, I should say. Uh, for the most part, they were all actresses who cycled through, you know, any number of Italian cinema genre, you know, in the 60s and 70s. Uh, Rosalba Neri, for example, you're beautiful, um, very talented uh, Italian actress. Um, she's uh, the lead character in Lady Frankenstein. Uh, so, you know, she did some horror films uh, in the 70s, but uh, it, you can see her a lot in early 60s peplums uh, too. And I would love to bring uh, those uh, actresses, you know, into many faces of her Hughes pages be because great. they contributed so much to the genre. Oh, and, and, I, and I, think that, I think that they've been unsung too. Yes, they've been largely unsung. There are occasional groups that pop up that uh, focus on them. But I haven't heard from any other groups in a while. Yeah, and I think it's time to you know, draw some attention to uh, those folks because they, you, you, you have to in almost any peplum, you have to have an evil queen, right? <laughs> <laughs> almost every one of them and it makes the it makes the the storyline much more fun you know when, when you have the evil queen who is somehow you know uh mysteriously drawn or attracted to you know the hero uh maybe it's you know he is good and benevolent maybe it's maybe it's just because he's just the you know the the, the latest guy in town you know who knows um it's hard but, to but tell what, movies, what the motivation is sometimes it's well, it is but they got tired Sometimes. of their old bow and here's somebody new. You know, there are rumors about him. So there's a certain mystique. He's the son of a god or he's mm -hmm. done a whole bunch of really cool things, fighting against monsters and toppling tyrants and, you know, exciting things like that. Or sometimes it's because, you know, he is good and uh, you know, is the representation of that. And for you know, opposites attract, <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> Well, they do. Uh, you know, this not this not that they stay together, but but I do think that you know that's you know kind of what turns your head. Uh, well, speaking of that, there was a cartoon called uh, Space Sentinels that spawned another cartoon called Freedom Force. I don't know if you remember those. No. Mm -hmm. But Hercules was in there. He had long blonde hair, no beard, and he had like a Liberace cape uh, that he wore. Really. Yeah. And it turned out in one episode, they revealed that he and Morgana Le Fay, who is definitely naughty and an evil queen, oh, very had, much so, yes. had a thing going on. Uh, at really? One so they, they, they referred to it and there were, I think, a couple of flashbacks, uh, but it goes to what you said. Maybe, again, opposites do attract. Um, you know, like I said, I think they do, but that's not to say that they get together. You know, um, at least in my own relationship, um, after a week, oh golly, how do I put this without sounding horrible? Um, you really have to be friends first and foremost. That's and and that best. and then that's not really an opposites thing so much, but I do think that each person should bring something different to the relationship. You you, you shouldn't be just alike, but you, there's somewhere you should intersect, obviously, but you shouldn't be just alike because that would be dull, wouldn't it? 
that's, that's why we're individuals. Exactly. And, and you want, you, you know, I mean, uh, over the course of the last almost 38 years, I've, you know, I, I know I'm sure I've absorbed, you know, part of my partner's personality. <laughs> yeah. But I mean, the good parts, though, I mean, not you, you, nothing horrible or anything like that. But I, I do think you grow together after a while. But you should still bring something in, something different. You shouldn't be just alike. Oh, very true. Yeah, it, it makes life uh, interesting if uh, you're different, but that overlap is very important and the friendship is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, because I, I found in my life uh, of having relationships that if you're not enough alike, that becomes a very big problem because you view the world in a different way. You well, that's a good point. How to spend your time and money in different ways. Uh, and uh, uh, again, I'm very eccentric and I have a, a unique way of looking at things. Uh, so for me to find the agreement <laughs> on something over a long period of time is very rare. So Athena and I have been together for like 20 years. This is our time. 20th year anniversary. Yeah, for me, that's a very long time. That's a long time for anyone. I mean, the, the 20 years is 20 years. That's a long time. And it's also an indicator of, uh, as we are told in higher ed, uh, being able to establish a lasting relationship, no matter how codependent it might be, <laughs> in my case, uh, uh, that is a sign of maturity. Uh, that is a sign of, of stability, uh, of a stable person. Now, now whether it really is or not, uh, but, but those are markers that we look for. Very, very true. I think so too. Yeah, I'm in my 60s now. I've gotten older. I was a lot wilder when I was uh, younger. But well, weren't we all? But stability, as you get older, becomes a good thing. I found anyway. I, I, I don't want to make this sound like you know the late middle aged blues or anything, but I think just feeling good. I think that's everything. If you've yes. got that. If you, if you can you know, walk across the room without being in crippling pain, <laughs> I think that's something you, you probably should celebrate <laughs> right now, because I haven't been able to do that for about uh, a year and three months, you know, myself. So uh, it, it's things like that that make you realign your priorities. <laughs> it's getting better. The medicine sort of works, in uh, a way, but sort of. Yeah, I have a, a quest going on now. I'm doing it mostly with Michael Del Rusi, uh, but Nick uh, Curdo also joined. It's uh, uh, wrestling with yetas, and uh, uh, in Greek, that means old age. And there are actually some uh, pottery fragments uh, of drawings on vases and uh, other ancient uh, um, pottery of Hercules fighting with like old age. And in some oh, wow. pictures, they look like they're going at it, you know, and really fighting. And then another, another it sounds, it looks like they're just chatting. And uh, that paradox, we don't have the stories. They didn't survive. They could be like different stories, the same story, who knows? Uh, but I always took it that there's some point where you fight old age, you do new sets of exercises, you take vitamin, you know, new sets of vitamins, you adopt uh, dietary and other practices, uh, you take supplements, you know, you do all sorts of stuff. Uh, and then there's there, there's a point where we just accept the fact that this happens to everybody and now it's happening to you and you 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 get a certain like level of peace with it and yeah this is just a new chapter in your life uh, and you just go with the flow. It is, but I think that the most important thing on earth is to keep moving. Yeah, I don't. I, and you, as as horrible as uh, you feel sometimes at this age, and especially if you're you know, <laughs> if you have crippling arthritis like I do now, uh, or um, if you just have some mobility issues, I know it, it hurts. I, I I know how painful it is. But if you stop moving, it's going to be a thousand times worse. Yes. Keep keep moving. It, you you got to you got to stay one or two steps ahead of death, you know, or or, or you're gone. <laughs> you know, uh, you you've got to keep moving. I think that is so important. And I think it's important too. 
even through psoriatic arthritis and having swollen feet, which I still have, by the way. Um, I, I took about, I don't know, three, probably six months or so uh, off my exercise regimen because I just couldn't, you know, with the joint pain and swelling, I just couldn't move. And I ballooned, you know, I, I gained weight. Uh, I had no stamina at all. You know, I would get winded walking across the room. Uh, I, I, I shouldn't have slacked off, but I did uh, just because of the pain. I, sh I should have known better. Uh, I should have just you know, gone on with it. But it hurt, you know, and I'm thinking, eh, it hurts. You know, I, I don't want to do this. And I really should have. I should have kept going. Yeah, I, I can I can certainly understand that. Uh, and uh, I learned, I used to work, uh, one of the jobs I've had was working with people who uh, got in accidents and uh, they couldn't do what they were doing before. So I had to work with their. Uh, wow. I did not know that. Yes, it was in the rehabilitation, uh, private rehabilitation. So the, oh. the people or the clients were either lawyers or, or people or insurance companies. And each one of them wanted you to present the facts in a certain way. But, you know, you, you ethically just have to present the facts, you know, uh, okay. and uh so I would talk to different doctors and I saw consistently time and again, the people who have avoided getting physical therapy and other treatment like that, which was painful and uncomfortable. I've had physical therapy a few times. I can vouch for that uh, myself, but the people who didn't would develop soft tissue damage. Uh, oh yeah, definitely. Yes. And so it was like a hundred times worse and the money that they got was never worth the excruciating pain that they uh, we're not living it. So I learned the lesson that you're now sharing, you know, that wh whatever it is, just move, even if it's for a little while, even if you say that sucks that I only moved this much, make sure you move, make sure uh, you, you tackle those stairs, that extra room, you know, yep. just keep going because uh, the alternative is not pretty. Well, and, and you know, like I said, when you stop moving, that's it. When, when you lose your legs, you know, and, and if you don't move them regularly, you'll lose them. Yeah. You know, and that, and that goes with everything. That's your, your brain, you know, your, your most important organ, you know, right there. If you don't use it, you, know, you, you, you just start dumbing down. And it's so important. It's important at any age to think, you know, and to use your brain. But I, I dare say it's more important now than ever because you don't want to forget how to do it. <laughs> I try challenging myself by doing new things. Uh, uh, like I've uh, meditated on and off for many years, uh, but now I'm trying uh, things that I might have tried a long time ago, but never really kept up the practice uh, with meditation. And uh, even with my exercises, I've gone back to uh, the uh, early physical culture exercises of, yeah, you know, mm -hmm. like muscle control, where the, it's, it's kind of like, uh, Charles Atlas type of exercises, but even more basic. And uh, what you do is you're, you're tensing muscles, you're becoming aware of them, and you're visualizing them. And you will get, you, you won't get as muscular as if you did weights, but you will get muscular if you just do uh, uh, creative uh, dynamic tension or uh, mm -hmm. just focusing on the muscles and tensing them and then relaxing them. And so I'm looking at those old muscle control books and I'm playing with them. Uh, I can't uh, at this particular point in time do the really heavy weights anymore. Not so much because they're heavy, uh, but because of my balance, uh, because of my neuropathy. So I've adapted to doing like pyramid sets and other types of things with the weights where eventually I'll get the burn, I'll get the peak, but you know, it won't be like before, but you know, if you can, it's better than doing nothing. So I'm always finding ways of doing the exercises, even if it's not to my satisfaction, at least I'll get a good workout out of it. Well, and, and at least you're moving. Um, you know, and there again, I, that, that, like I said, that's the most important thing uh, uh, to it. I mean, yeah, I mean, trying to build muscle mass at this age is yeah, not impossible, uh, but, but extremely difficult. And I mean, if you can do it, great. But just <laughs> like I said, stay stay a few steps ahead of death. Um, keep moving, and you know, as long as you can, you know, uh, walk around, you know, comfortably and uh, 
with some stability, you know, hopefully and that's that that's that's going to take you a long way into old age. A strength training, I think, is extremely important. Yes. Too. And that is something that I don't do as much now. And, and I, it's one of those things that I plan to do more of, you know, when I retire, uh, since I'll have some more time. Well, when you when you retire, if you want, because uh, um, Michael DeLucy and I, uh, are no longer at our peak, you know, like uh, with the bodybuilding and the muscle building, but we still do it. And we're yeah. both pretty focused on doing it. Uh, Ryan Foley, he's younger than us. So he's like into it and he, he has all the knowledge and all, all the motivation and all the drive. So it's very refreshing to, to listen to the, you know, the, the youthful exuberance. Uh, and he's also a very deep and uh, thoughtful person. So uh, a lot of his ideas and philosophies come out uh, during our, our conversations. And then I have, um, of course, um, the uh, super strength uh, training with Bill Hinburn. So that's yes. an institution like Charles Atlas. That's been there uh, like since the early days of the hobby and it continues. And it's a it's like your uh, website uh, with Peplum Movies, um, Bill's, his website and his catalog, which is like a collector's item. <laughs> uh, that's like the, the uh, shrine to uh, retro bodybuilding when it was still called physical mm. culture. Yes. So that's an awesome uh, show. And then it started with the, um, um, the club training. Hercules uses a club. So if you I'll, I'll learn club training and I've been doing that. Um, that's not as heavy as, uh, um, some of the other exercises, but it could get heavy, like the uh, the the clubs from India are like trees, you know. So I, I don't see myself getting there very soon, but there is a there to go to. So I will strive uh, for it. And now I have as a special um, somebody who had a version of these exercises in uh, John Peterson, and he's a controversial figure, but he didn't use any weights, and he he looks like a bodybuilder, you know, uh, and he's in his seventies now. Mm -hmm. so those are all the shows tied into uh physical culture or the herculean physique as uh i call it on the shows but i've invited people countless times if they're trying to get back in shape or uh, regain their health or build a herculean physique however they define it um that, that'd be something we'd welcome on the show so a few of the other hosts have come on a few times with what they're doing and it varies widely what people are doing some it's dietary some it's a yoga you know whatever they do it's okay as long as you're trying to do something and then sharing the journey and learning from what everybody else is doing and and that's the thing none of us are doctors none of us are health professionals we're all people right, right. who want to be healthy you know so this is what we learned this is where we fell, fell on our face you know, like I, I, I sincerely believe I got diabetes because I followed old bodybuilding advice to drink a gallon of milk a day and like six oranges. So the amount of sugar on that, I didn't even think of it, um, you know, and, and I got big within like months. I got really huge, bigger than I had ever gotten. And then it started to crash and started to fall down stairs. And uh, that was like the beginning of the diabetes. Oh, so I, was, I was consuming all this sugar every day that I didn't. I was lactose intolerant, but I built my resistance up to bring a gallon of milk a day. Uh, mm. It took a while, but then the fall was swift. So just learning those things, you know, from other people who are also trying to do the same uh, thing. Uh, it, it, I think it's a valuable endeavor. And, uh, um, you know, why not learn from somebody's mistakes, you know? Or True, but every stuff. but 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 everyone's physiology is different, right? Um, and uh, you know, there are some foods that I do well with that you might not, right? You know, uh, and uh, some things, some things that I love, I think, are just uh, energy killers. Um, well, sh sugar is horrible. I mean, I but I love it. <laughs> you know? uh, it, it sounds like you did too, if you were eating six oranges. Yes. yes. Um, I, and I, I, you know, some people get the salty gene where they like, um, you know, like wheat based salty you know, snacks. Uh, I, I may have been that person at one time, but as I get older, the, the more I focus on stuff that is sweeter, not, not necessarily, I don't want to say sugary, uh, but, but definitely sweet. All right. 
I can't hear Hercules. There we go. Can you hear me oh, now? Okay. Yes, I can. I can hear you now. Okay. Awesome. Um, yeah, th that's very true. Everything you said is uh, very true. We're all different, and uh, we mm -hmm. like different things, and some of those things are good for us, and some of those things are are bad for us. Um, but ultimately and eventually, you know, the journey leads to the end of life. And uh, I think it's what you make of what you had here and have here and do here and enjoy here that, that matters. Oh, I, I couldn't agree more. Um, uh, being happy is being happy, you know. But I, I think that... Um, yeah, you can you know, increase uh, your chances for happiness, or maybe even improve your happiness if you feel good, you know. And and if if you keep moving, and if you uh, eat things that aren't you know, too horrible for you, <laughs> you know, if you if you can stay away from the processed stuff, which I, which I think will kill people, uh, you know. And 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 I'm I'm one to talk. I've eaten. I grew up on processed food. I mean, that was, you know, <laughs> that was our generation. Uh, maybe even more so for me than for you. I mean, I'm just a few years later, but I, I think that's when things radically shifted. No, know, processed uh, food has been there for all of us. Uh, um, and yeah, it was very much a part of my uh, growing up. Uh, a lot of the food was thought of as a filler by my family. They they grew up during the war and the depression and all this uh, type of stuff. So uh, uh, to them, breads and cereals were filler, you know, something you ate to keep your belly full. Uh, so that the pieces of like meat and vegetable that you can get, you know, uh, and olive oil could be like savored. Um, so that was the philosophy you know they didn't know that these things would cause a lot of our diseases later on but we grew up on those foods uh, because again they were filler and uh, uh, they allowed you to enjoy the special uh, extras like meat and vegetables and fruits and and things like that well and you know that's the I'm sure that's the way it was for my upbringing as well. Um, if you, I, I follow a lot of different concerns on Facebook, but one of them is uh, sort of a, I can't, and I cannot think of what it's called. It's very nostalgic for the 1970s, which were, you know, 50, that was 50 years ago. Um, and the supermarket, uh, you know, photos uh, that they display on, uh, in those groups are just amazing because everything in the bass cart is a box. I mean, everything. There, there is no, there's no produce there. There's no fresh meat there. Um, there's no dairy. It's just everything is in a box. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it's, it, it, it's kind of amazing. And uh, that must have been a big switch from, you know, even like the 1940s or 50s. Uh, when something when something that processed would have been expensive um, to the 1970s when the processed stuff suddenly became the more affordable uh, you know food you know and, and that's what you fed your family because you know the uh, the, the inflation of the 70s remember how, how much we used to hear about all of that yeah I mean it was true I mean it, you know, it we're in an inflationary period now, uh, but it really did drive up a lot of costs in the 70s. And women went to work. Yep, yeah, yeah, everybody, everybody, everybody's mom, including mine, went to work. Yes. Yep. And now we have our world. <laughs> yeah, but that's, yeah, you and I are, uh, well, I'm not retiring yet, but I'm going to be. Uh, pretty soon, you and I are retirees. And that's a completely different world. Yeah. What do you find? Like, I, I find that uh, basically my creativity and my being able to do the things that I really want to do, like these conversations that I have with uh, people, uh, it's a very important part of my life. I enjoy it. I enjoy talking to people. I enjoy talking to some people like yourself, you know, over and over and over <laughs> again over time. And, I, and other people, the conversation is shorter and more time passes in between. But I get a lot of these uh, conversations. It's like processing. Uh, it's like processing a shared experience in life. 
and the interests that I have that uh, these shows are basically about, uh, they give my life uh, meaning and joy also because, hey, Peppel movies, you know, that, that's those are one of my uh, uh, areas of, uh, of of passion. I love those movies, and uh, they they were they were on this earth for a very brief time, although it seems like they've been on earth for you know our entire lives before and you know after. Uh, in reality, the Peplum era was very short, but it's influenced so many people in different ways. Michael Del Russo and I talk about this uh, um, a lot. Uh, when I was doing the first Age of Heroes in New York City, and that one, we, had, we made a pilot for it. We had a comic strip in a, in a newspaper. You know, it was a whole big you know, thing. Uh, all I had to tell people was I wanted to do what Jason the Argonauts did. And these people grew up on Peplum movies. They knew exactly what I was talking about. And back then, at least, who didn't want to be an Argonaut? You know, so with Jason on the voyage. So we're able to do things like uh, um, open up a computer center where people could drop by and use computers during the during the heyday of the digital divide. Uh, mm. and, uh, you know, do and there wasn't any money in it. Uh, agencies were doing it because. Um, one of the things you realize when you work in institutional helping is that in, in before you realize it, you become the iron fist in the velvet glove, which is everything you pay. <laughs> so, uh, and uh, the amount of help you can actually uh, give is, is, is very limited uh, and, and very sporadic. So this is a chance to go back to why you became a human service worker or an educator initially. And let's try to do that. And like uh, one agency had a room, another agency had some typewriters, uh, not typewriters, uh, uh, computers that weren't the best, but they were computers and they worked and they weren't that old. Uh, and uh, another agency had people coming asking for things that they couldn't provide, uh, including computers. So it's just, well, what can you give? What do you want to do? What, what makes your agency happy or more fulfilling their vision? And just with everybody's wants and desires, we created this thing that lasted, you know, until Bill Gates actually gave computers to libraries, which happened uh, uh, toward the end of that uh, digital divide uh, thing. Uh, but we had mythologized that it was Ganingakap, the gaping void in Norse mythology, and uh, we were doing all sorts of things uh, to practically uh, create spaces where people can learn basic computer skills and how to use computers and set up email accounts. Uh, because not having an email address even back then was tantamount to not having an address. And you know how difficult it is when you don't have a permanent address. It was the same with the computer. Uh, so it was a fun adventure and, and it lasted. Um, but uh, it, it, what fueled it is, hey, I want to be an Argonaut, just like Jason. And, you know, get whatever the Golden Fleece happens to be in this particular point in time and use it to help people, you know, rather than being the uh, Iron Fist and the Velvet Glove. So... Very long-winded answer. <laughs> no, but but you but you know what I mean. Well, what you're saying comes through, comes through loud and clear. I understand exactly. You know, it, being in higher ed for God knows how long. Um, I understand exactly what you're saying. Um, you know, sometimes you know, uh, no matter what your intentions are, you 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 do fall into you know, a certain pattern. Uh, when, when it does come to you know, tr trying to help somebody out and, um, and you know, nothing's black and white, um, especially not anything to, to deal with human services, you know, certainly. Uh, there are always, you know, continuations, there are always shades of gray. Um, and, you know, policies are meant to be broken. <laughs> you know, and, and every situation is different. Yes. You know, and you're right about the iron fist. I mean, that doesn't work, but neither does the velvet glove. So what do you do? And, and that becomes the adventure from, from that point on. When you ask and, and, and that's when you go to work. <laughs> See, this is what they don't teach you in graduate school. No, they don't. Uh, it's, there's, there's well, a not, not a bit. No, I don't remember this class at all. <laughs> like human service workers have a high suicide rate, or they did. Uh, all my no, 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 no. It's old. 
Um, but I remember, and I was in the human services, so this became something of concern. So I would like look at what, you know, what, what type of thing would happen. And what, what I found would happen time and again, and I actually lost a few people we work with to a suicide. So I was trying to remember what type of things they were talking about, you know, before they uh, committed suicide. You yeah. realize that what drove you to the field of human services to help people is you wanted to solve a problem in your life. And it could be within yourself or it could be with somebody close to you. You know, like, uh, let's say your sibling was a drug addict or uh, oh, your grandfather okay. was an alcoholic and nothing anybody did was effective. So you went out there and got yourself an education and you got a, a degree and you got certifications and you got hired and you were recognized as, as a social worker so or a human service or a therapist or, you know, whatever. Uh, and then you would work with uh, the population, you know, that uh, you, you're focusing on. So with substance abusers or with depressed people or, you know, whatever people you want to help. And if you do that for like, it usually would happen like between seven and 10 years, sometimes only as five, you start to realize that what you're doing is hit and miss. So sometimes you're doing your best work and it has no effect. Sometimes you're doing, you're just like calling it in and you have a significant effect on the person's life. And you, and you can't see what you did right or wrong in either you know, case. Uh, and then from there, you st slowly start remembering why you got into the human services and you wanted to help Uncle Joe with his uh, substance abuse, let's say. And right. Uncle Joe is still taking substances if he's still alive and nothing the family is doing is helping Uncle Joe. And in fact, all your newfound knowledge and recognition as, a, as somebody who can heal people hasn't done a hell of a lot for Uncle Joe again. And then you realize that all the people you're seeing are Uncle Joe. You know, so when, when you realize that you come to a very strange, uh, you know, place because your life is defined by something that you've forgotten. And not everybody forgets. Some people remember and, and they're the more, the more strong for it. But if you've forgotten, then it hits you all of a sudden and you ask yourself, you know, what have you been doing? You know, this, this hasn't been to help anybody. It's been to help you and your original situation, which you still can't seem to resolve. So that that those are the dark places that the journey may take you. And uh, that's when it becomes very dangerous when you come thinking those thoughts and having those realizations. Um, wow. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it's, that's pretty deep, <laughs> but but no. In a nutshell, there I support everything that you just said. Um, you know, like I said, I've worked in higher ed for uh, forever, and uh, I, I know a number of people with uh, who are social workers. You know, working in higher education, and you're right. The burnout uh, is extremely high. The suicide rate is really high. And uh, I think I think you're probably right. It's you know not knowing how effective you are or um, you know, like break, you know, busting your hump, you know, you know, breaking your back on a situation and there's no effect. You know, versus as you mentioned, uh, just sort of giving it a half-hearted, half-hearted effort and it works, um, which. It's just the way that you know, the situation is, uh, but everything you know, goes back to to Uncle Joe himself, right? I mean, if Uncle Joe doesn't want help, Uncle Joe is not going to take right. any help. That that's that, that that's what I have picked up out of all of this. Um, I offer help to people who want it. You know, uh, that should be there, you know, for them. Uh, but but realize that a lot of people don't want to help, and they, and they know what they are. It, you, you know, they know that they're addicts, um, but they don't. <laughs> that's not a problem, you know, uh, apparently. Or uh, yeah, I mean, gosh, it's. 
it, 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 it does it does seem so so futile and i don't want it to i don't want to end on that i don't want to no, I, I, because I, it's not and i think that a lot of us don't realize how much positive influence because it can't really be measured i don't think a real i don't think we realize how much positive influence we have by just being there yeah and listening um you don't you don't and you know what i'm sorry empiricism be damned there are some things you just can't fucking measure you know and i well it's true and i'm, I'm sick of all this you know uh, oh it has to be measured well you know, fine figure out how to do it uh but you know uh, until then you, you can't measure uh, a lot of what it is you do in human services you just can't that, that's very true and now i'm getting involved in like human services again but not as a, a practitioner and uh, some of the things i learned there are, are becoming useful like, as you said somebody doesn't want help then they're going to fight to resist the help uh, yeah there's, there's no don't even waste your time <laughs> you know what i right. mean uh, uh, develop tell way. that person that you when, whenever you decide you want help there is help out there come see me then until then i got nothing for you yeah. and develop the things that help people if they want help and let people know that mm -hmm. the help is there if they want it right. and access it if they want it and uh you know very open to that uh, and i found by doing that like uh we we learned on some of the shows where we focus only on positive things Mm -hmm. that, that there are enough positive things out there to keep you more than busy you know and uh, to change your whole attitude and so if you're thinking of negative things if you think of positive things instead and there are plenty of positive things that you can focus on uh not that it'll make your life easier but it'll make it more filled with uh with positivity and good feelings and happiness yeah. uh, if you don't focus on it no that, that that's a good point and, and you know um I think you're right. You should appreciate, you know, if especially for you people who are uh, who work in disciplines where you are trying to you know help humanity out to you know, to the next generation. Uh, obviously, uh, anybody in medicine uh, you know would would fall into that. But uh, you know, uh, folks in human services, uh, you know, counselors, social workers. Uh, I've got a friend who's who works in CPS in um, New Orleans, which has got to be, you know, in a big city like that. I, I just can't imagine because um, you know I live in a college town. It's so not, not not such a big place, but um, I mean, bless those people. We we really need them, uh, and and uh, you know, it goes back to why we like Peppin films. We're all you know. <laughs> I guess looking for the hero, uh, and you know, I, I, I don't, I don't want to say that you know a lot of uh, people who work in human services, they, they are heroes certainly. I don't think they necessarily see themselves that way, um, because if you think about it, there's little reward in, in slamming your head against a brick wall every day. <laughs> it hurts after a while, but but those people are there and they do it, and they uh, are are very special people, I think. And I tried to bring that heroic spirit back to them. In fact, uh, yeah. colleges used to pay me to talk about this. I talked about it at a LaGuardia Community College function or something, and immediately I got offers to talk about this at like functions. So for a while, I was telling the the, the story that basically some kids when they were growing up wanted to be firemen, some wanted to be policemen, some wanted to be priests, some wanted to be teachers. I wanted to be Hercules or at least the son of Hercules. Uh, I wanted to topple tyrants. I wanted to fight social ills. <laughs> you know, I didn't want to do it by beating people up, but I wanted to confront these things head on and try to, you know, uh, wrestle them and, you know, uh, um, de defeat them in some way. And, and I found by doing the Age of Heroes many, many moons uh, later, uh, that uh, a lot of people felt that way. So I, I decided to live there. Uh, <laughs> and it's been a great place to live. Many things have changed in my life uh, uh, for the better, for the more challenging, but, but live, I found my home. 
Well, uh, I, I wanted to be, I wanted to direct horror films. That, that was one of my, uh, school, you know, one of my career goals uh, when I was a teenager. Either that or be a rock journalist and write for the Rolling Stone. That, that, had, a, that had a lot of appeal uh, to it at the time. Um, but, uh, you know, you aim high. You, you know, you've you got to have, uh, you know, something to shoot for. Or aim, or aim low, if that's a thing. Uh, I wanted to be in anthologies of horror in like with, with uh, uh, like a psychic and things like that stuff with like lurid covers and lurid titles. And uh, I remember Tim Beckley and all the books that uh, he was publishing. He was one of my heroes, like Lloyd Kaufman of Troma was one of my hero filmmakers. And uh, I was in a movie, although they cut me out of it in Troma. I was in actually two films that they cut me out of in Troma. And uh, I've been in over 20 paranormal anthologies with lurid titles. <laughs> uh, already and in fact i wrote for tim beckley while he was still alive uh, so all our dreams regardless of how lofty or how not so lofty they may be uh, are attainable so i can see you directing i can see you writing so i can see coffee table books of different genres uh, and you know it's kind of hard to tell with uh free with more free time it's hard to tell what what you're going to get out of me uh but um I, I will do something. I, I promise not to watch, sit around and watch game shows. Well, thank you very much. I hear Greg in the background. Uh, you are, as always, awesome. Um, oh, well, thank you so much, Hercules. I, I, I have such a good time, Bob. Same here. And uh, I guess we'll close. Uh, I will work on this tonight so it doesn't disappear where my other shows uh, happen to go. Uh, we had a technician come uh, today and tell me everything's okay, but my printer's not working yet and we have several mm. other small problems. So, um, well, thank you for the conversation. Uh, enjoy your vacation. I look forward to getting okay. back. Okay, and I will talk to you next week. Talk to you then and thank you to all who tuned in whether you went to YouTube and found us or whether you went to Facebook and found us, as long as you found us, that's great. And we look forward to having you join us again in the very near future.